This summer, I plan to walk through the writing process from idea to completion. In this video, let's talk about second drafts and revising. First, if you completed a first draft, even a short work, congratulations! Completing the downdraft is one of the hardest parts of writing. The other hard part of writing, making our way to the final draft. How do we get there? Any writer will tell you the same thing I will tell you. We don't know. It's hard to know when a draft is finished. We keep writing one draft at a time until we're satisfied. Before we get to the final draft, we need to get to the second draft. In my experience, this is how the process to a second draft happens. We leave the first draft alone and work on something else. We return to the first draft and reread. Typically, it reads awful or at the very least incomplete. We go through the first draft and mark it up for all kinds of reasons like grammatical mistakes or bad dialogue. We start the drafting process all over again, either using what we wrote or trying something new. Yes, some writers will try to rewrite a second draft from memory to exclude things that don't matter. Unlike before, now we have a completed draft. Our first draft emerged from ideas that we tried out. We tried them out. With a completed draft, we can evaluate the totality of our ideas and how we express them. We can discern patterns that work and that don't. We can see if all the events lead to the conclusion. Typically, a first draft is longer and needs weeding or cutting. I have, however, written first drafts that felt too short. And if we do that, that's okay. That means we may need to expand on some details or events. Let's return to the father-son murder mystery we've used in the previous two videos. Let's just look at the prologue. In the prologue, I introduce the town, what's going on, and introduce a group of characters called the Breakfast Club Chatty. The prologue ends as one character reveals what he heard about the main character John's son. This information is ostensibly what prompts John to confront his son and later murder him. If I'm revising the prologue, then I'm looking at it in connection with the rest of the narrative, the total narrative. I may ask, does it belong? Can we have some of these elements with an event that features the main character? Does it propel the story? During the process of revision, I may return to my scratch work or memory and ask, well, why did I write this? I chose to write this prologue to set up the town, where we are, who lives here, and their values, and how they pass on information. That's my justification for this chapter existing. Even if the main characters aren't in it, I may decide that the prologue works fine, but maybe we need to amplify the connection between the Breakfast Club and John, that this is the information that prompts John to his incredible, awful action. It could be as simple as them saying, you worked with John, yeah? Look, I need to know if you've heard this, but you won't tell John I asked you. It's real bad. Maybe I have this come after the rest of the Breakfast Club leave to emphasize how bad the information is. Y'all go on without me and Ed. Later, we add that Ed is the one who told John. This is one facet of the process. We're ensuring unity in the complete work, that the tone and perspective reads the same, that characters make sense and have a reason for existing, that things connect, and that each action or event has a cause. Once we complete a second draft, we'll keep revising with either fresh or new ideas, stronger choices for how our characters act, or how we connect the reader to our character and their actions. Typically, we'll reach a point where it becomes difficult to know how to solve issues in our story, or to know if a story is working or not. We do not have fresh eyes. Most writers I know either put something away before returning to it, or they have a friend who can read and offer their outsider perspective. It typically takes me three to four drafts before I've become comfortable sharing my work in progress to someone I trust for their feedback. What I'm interested in is their broad feedback. What's working? What's confusing? What doesn't work? I've included a link to Orson Scott Card's The Wise Reader in the description that can help in this evaluation phase. We finish when we feel we have nothing more to add and nothing seems confusing or inexplicable. We have no further ideas on how to improve the work and we cannot detect a problem that has a better solution for the expression. The other way of thinking about when something is finished 
Once it's published, it's finished.